my friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Today's video is going to be kind of a partial look because I'm focusing in on a new collection that I actually recently received in PR and I was so impressed with most of it. It's from LA Girl and it's called the Sun Kissed Glow Collection and basically it's a beautiful bronzy palette with a lot of range so beautifully light to dark and a really nice balance of finishes as well. You've got a split pan matte bronzer which really reminds me of something that I loved in the past. A highlight here that's kind uh, we'll get to that one. And then some beautiful shadow sticks as well. And as I was looking through the PR info, I don't know if Jordan Liberty did the work on this collection. I mean, it looks beautiful and it very well could have been him, but they featured him down here with a pro tip talking about using the shadow sticks for long lasting wear under the eye, which is a tip I love, but also he's amazing. And so if he's associated with this collection, I'm also very impressed. But today I'm going to try all elements of this makeup collection on for you, talk about about my favorites and my not so favorites, but I love the prices. The palette's gonna run around, I think it's 16 or $17, which is kind of high when we're thinking about the drugstore price range, but it's also a fairly large palette and the quality is impeccable. Like I was so impressed. I know LA Girl kicks out some really good products from time to time, but that really blew me away. So what I have on now is foundation, concealer, powder, and my eyebrows. So we're ready to jump into this matte bronzer compact. First off, look how big it is. Like it's a big old compact and it's kind of hard to be able to tell through the plastic window, but this is a split pan and it's totally matte and it reminds me so much of the Milani Bronzer XL. Does anybody remember that product? It was really this size, but it was split vertically like that, and it had two tones of bronzer that were both really perfect, and I love this. This reminds me so much of that. So I have this lighter tone that I can start working in, and they're both really pigmented, and I love how the intensity is something that I feel like could work for anyone. You could start in with a little bit of the lighter tone, find a place for the deeper, you know? Right now I'm just working off the top part of it and I'm just giving myself a little bit of cheek contour there. And it's just perfect, you know? Not too warm, not too cool. Just a perfect like middle of the road color scheme for bronzer. Could even take that particular shade and work it up a little bit, go on the top of the cheeks, across the nose. And then maybe we wanna work in some of the deeper bronzer. That one can be very intense. Um, I learned that the other day. I was not aware of how light to go with it and I just really scrubbed into it for some reason. And I think maybe you might feel led to do a little bit more like back and forth in the pan because it creates no fallout. So that might make you think, oh, it's really firm. It's not gonna be maybe be as soft and pigmented, but it still is really pigmented. So for me, it amounts to two beautifully usable shades in one. I hope they keep this around. I hope it's not just a real quick limited edition thing because this is a great product. Trying to kind of warm up the skin even on top of the cheeks. Actually, my foundation today is concealing a bit of a sunburn on my nose and I got a little color elsewhere. So I used a slightly deeper shade like I was looking through what I had and this custard color of the Huda Luminous Matte is a pretty good shade shade match for when I've got a bit of a tan going, but my nose turned like red. I must not have reapplied enough sunscreen there. Okay, so there we are with that bronzer. I love it. Highly recommend. Then my friends, there's not a blush in this collection, so I'm going to stick with LA Girl and I'm going to use one of their soft matte cream blushes, which I love. You can use these on lips or cheeks. Um, they're really pigmented, just a beautiful product. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of this shade. Did I say grace? Right there on my hand, kind of a dusty rose color. Pick some up with my little Sephora 56 brush mini size and we're just gonna dab this on the cheeks. It's kind of weird to look at my face with the brows done before my face is even finished, you know? Just trying to streamline the process. These are definitely like a little bit goes a long way product. Like there's one application of it and I'm wanting a little more, but I wouldn't want to like slap it all on all at once. Again, this is not part of the collection, just another LA Girl product I had and I love. I'm just pressing this in. So pretty. 
Now the highlighter is the thing I don't really love in this collection. Again, it's a really big pan, um, just like the bronzer is, but it's got like those little sort of glittery flecks in it that sort of make the skin from a distance look maybe even a little bit glossy, but up close, I feel like it accentuates every little thing that I don't really want to draw attention to um, around the eye area, let's say. So I'm gonna put some of this on for you just so you can see. I mean, see what I mean about sort of the glossiness? But even if I blend it really well, and I feel like I go over it a bunch, I can still see the little flecks in it, and I don't love to see that. There are enough highlighters that are really good at a good price that don't do that at all, so I don't feel like you have to get this. I wouldn't recommend it. Still applying it, just so you can see. This is not gonna be a continued use product for me. If you find yourself with it, and you'd like to make use of it, I would say maybe as a body highlight it could be good, but I just don't like that texture on my face. So I'm gonna use my Beauty Blender now and kind of go over that just a little bit more. Try to help make it a little more one with the skin. That's the one thing that kind of helps after I put that highlight on. From a distance, I mean dewy glowy skin, but just don't be looking up too close at that. Then I'm gonna set things with my CoverGirl Priming Glow Mist. I love this stuff. So we love the bronzer, love the cream blush that was used, not so much a fan of the highlight, but now we're gonna move on to eyes. So these shadow sticks that are part of the collection, I'm swatching them for you here. They're really good. They're super long wearing, just like some other um, shadow sticks that I love as well. And they pair beautifully with this collection. If you wanna use it as smudgy liner, if you wanna use it like lower liner, like the Jordan Liberty tip, and I talk about that as well. Getting long wear on your lower lash line by using a shadow stick there, these are great for that. So these are the shadow sticks. They're calling these Sunkissed Glow, and then I've swatched them all right here. This kind of orangey bronze is called Summer Heat, and then we have uh, Suede Fringe, that next one up from that, and that looks kind of like a soft rose gold. The color with a little mauve in it, I love this one. It's called Sandy Desert. That's one of my faves, and also above that is the one called Cactus. That's the green. Now right out here, I've swatched a couple of faves I've shared recently from Makeup Forever, for their smoky shadow sticks. I've swatched out Jungle in Pink Canyon, and while they are really close shade matches to these others, Jungle is a little deeper, just a little more intense, but Pink Canyon is pretty much spot on for the Sandy Desert shade here, so I thought you guys might like to know that. Um, these are, again, super long wearing, just a real similar formula to the Caviar Sticks and other long wear shadow sticks that are out there, um, but they're calling them Sunkissed Glow. I hope they continue to stay around. I'm not familiar enough with LA Girl to know if they have a long wearing shadow stick line, but calling these Sunkiss Glow really ties them to this collection, and I hope those are shades they continue to produce, is what I'm saying. I'm putting on some Milani eyeshadow primer here, and then I'm gonna show you this palette. So the palette is called Sunkiss Glow. It is a large eyeshadow palette. We have 20 shades in here. These shimmers are beautiful to work with. The mattes will blow your mind. Two rows fully matte. This shade kind of operates like a matte as well, although it's got like a teeny bit of sparkle in it. And then these shimmers, it's like every take on a neutral mid-tone to light shimmer going from taupe to bronze to light pink to champagne. I have not had an issue with a single shade in here. I've done some beautiful looks that have a lot of contrast. And you know, it's the kind of thing where, yeah, it's bronzy, it's summery, but that's definitely fall, that's winter, that's any time of year for a person who likes this kind of warm bronzy color. Scheme. So I'm going to first go in and show you like some of these started out mid-tone shades. For example, this one right here, I'm using my Profusion Crease Brush. And it's just, it's soft, but it's not out of control, you know? I'm not putting my brush in there and feeling like the entire shadow just blew up to a powdery mess. I'm able to get pigmented color with just a lot of ease. And it's reminding me of the experience I have putting on that ABH a Nouveau palette. That one, I feel like the formulas in there are just really easy, but pigmented, and that's what this is too. Um, all the shades are named on the back, but you know, we're just, we're gonna point here. So that's the one I just used. Now let's take it down a notch a little bit, a little bit deeper. I kind of by instinct tap off excess, but that didn't really have a lot to tap off. Look at that. If you love building that gradient of neutral mattes, you're gonna love this. That's one of my like, small thrills in makeup is building up really smooth mattes and watching the colors just sort of transform. 
so, so pretty. And you could easily do an all matte look here. You've got all the way down to a cream. You know, you could stay there with it. We are going to work in shimmer today. Then maybe we want to blend the outside of that. I've gone for a slightly fluffier profusion brush now. We'll go in with that lightest cream down in the corner. No problem. Then I think I'm going to go over to this deep brown right here. Nice and cool, not quite as dark as what's going on in the corner. And we're just going to pat that here on the outer part of the lid. Look how that pigmented color is just transferring down with these. Really no fallout risk here. Beautifully pigmented. It's hard to find a palette really these days with that much range that gets that dark. And when you have those nice deep dark shades, what you also have is the ability for those shimmers to pop even more because you're creating contrast. I'm always rooting for that in a palette. Now, one thing I would say here is we've got this cluster of super darks here. We could have maybe taken one of these browns and gone for a slightly different tone, like maybe even made one a dark green. You know, we have a green shadow stick. That could have been nice. Okay, so I've patted that darkest shade there, and then I kind of want to go in with a smaller brush, like my Profusion Small Pointed brush. Where did she go? Then I'm going to dip into this slightly warmer dark brown, and I'm going to go straight into the depths of the crease with that. See me kind of swirling it out and creating a little bit more of a shape here? Look at that. Giving some lift and it's blending beautifully over those mattes that were first placed in the crease, those lighter, mid-tone, softer ones. Oh, I just love the way these shades work together. Again, it's this shade right here. I mean, this could be high-end. This could be ABH. It's an extremely well-done palette. Um, I haven't tried oodles of palettes from LA Girl, but this one definitely, like, wows me. And I don't know, would I have thought to purchase it if I didn't get it in PR? I'm not sure. Because again, I just, I don't think I would have expected it to be anywhere near this good. Look, I'm just lightly going over the edge with a bare brush. Oh, it's so fun to work with shades like this. I just wanted to show you like how rich and dark the look can be. And then we're going to pop some shimmer. Let's do like kind of a bronzy color, maybe on the middle of the lid and work our way a little bit lighter going inward. I'm going to use this one up here because I haven't used this one a whole lot. I just kind of swatched it the other day. Ooh, that's toasty and nice. And look, it's not fooling around. It's not playing games. It's not being a chunky mess. It's being what you expect a nicely pigmented, high quality shimmer to be. And it can be more golden too. We've got a straight up gold. We've got bronzes. This is kind of a textbook bronzy shade, I feel like. But it's soft. It's not too brassy and orangey. The most brassy orangey thing really going on is this stick right here. And we do have kind of an orange shade in the palette, but it's soft. So there we are with our bronze over most of the lid. And then let's hop over to this shade right here. Just one of our several, ooh, wow. Our several light shades. I didn't remember be, it being that intense. Just down a notch from that lightest champagne, okay? This shade has just a hint more flake than that lightest color, but it's still playing nicely with the look and it can be pressed in. Maybe we take just a little bit of this and we say, hey, we want to light up that inner corner. Turn the lights on. Love that smoothness. I swear I was not paid to talk about this. I talk about what I want to talk about on my channel and I've done my darndest to keep it that way 100% throughout the whole life of my channel. This just excites me, okay? It excites me. All right, then what I want to do is go on the lower lash line with one of these shadow sticks. Like I said, my favorite two are Sandy Desert and also Cactus. I was playing with Cactus on the lower lash line yesterday. I loved it. It is a little softer than Jungle from Makeup Forever, but this... A dead-on dupe for Pink Canyon for Makeup Forever. This one called Sandy Desert. Kind of a mauve -y shade. Interesting color. But see how it's just deep enough, like, to really define the eye softly? Like, look at one eye compared to the other. I like that a lot. Plus, I can just totally count on these shadow sticks to last down here. 
on the lower lash line and they look automatically immediately smoky. Like I started to pull my finger in to smudge it, but I don't need to. It's the perfect line thickness there. Now what could be fun if we really want to intensify the look, maybe we're taking it day to night. Let's go into that dark brown that we first used and just add to that lower lash line a little bit. Ooh, just at the outside. I got that color right on the tip of this Profusion small pointed brush and we've added just a little more drama right there. Boom. Hey, what about take your angled liner brush, go into the black, which is a nice, like, seeing it on camera, it looks like pure pitch black. Looking at it in person, it seems like a shade softer than pitch black. And then I'm just taking a little bit of that on a um, angled brush. The word was not coming to me. And I'm just lining that upper lash line a little bit. I don't want to take it in too far, but I'm gonna line like two thirds of the lash line with that. Just stamp into it lightly, a little goes a long way. How fun is this palette? Yes, I think neutrals can be really, really fun. Neutrals with that much range, I mean, so much potential in that palette. Okay, I'm gonna throw on some mascara in a lip and we're gonna recap the whole look. All right, guys, here we are all finished up. Um, I used my CoverGirl Stretch and Strengthen mascara there on the lashes. I love that stuff so much. I draped just a little bit more of the lighter shade from the bronzer duo, just kind of like over the nose, practically like tops of the cheeks, just to sort of blend in my concealer a little bit because I've got a real brightening concealer. I used the Huda. I wanted to see the new concealer alongside the foundation and there's a big shade gap in these because my concealer is so light. And then for my lips, I'm wearing my Superstay Matte Ink Crayon in Enjoy the View, and I top that off with my Milani Keep It Full Lip Gloss in Rosy Bronze. So I really love the way this look came together, you guys. My favorite parts, definitely the eyeshadow palette, also the Duo Matte Bronzer. That's the kind of thing I could see pulling in on a daily basis, you know, for bronzer and contour. Having those two shades is huge. Out of the four shadow sticks, while they're all good. Um, my favorite shades are definitely Cactus, which is that nice olive green, and then Sandy Desert for a soft shimmery mauve. I feel both of these shades have enough depth to make sense on the lower lash line as smudgy liner, or they can really become part of your eyeshadow look or be your shadow look on the lids. That's kind of one of the good things about Cactus being softer in comparison to Makeup Forever's Jungle is that I think it can sheer out a bit more easily and become a nice all over the lid color if you want it to be. The only part of this collection that I definitely didn't like was the highlighter. I just think the texture is not really so great. And I don't really love seeing all those flecks of sparkle on my cheekbone when I know I could use my Believe Beauty or I could use Milani or so many various brands of highlight to get the look, you know? So I hope this video was helpful, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Um, LA Girl, again, is a brand that I'm semi-familiar with. You know, there are certain things that I know they do well, like blushes, um, some eyeshadow quads that have those kind of geometric shapes in there. I like those. Those cream blushes are outstanding, but if there's anything else I should know about from this brand, please let me know in the comments, and I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye.